The previous video introduced spherical coordinates, the numbers rho, theta, and phi that can be used to describe a point in space. Recall that rho represents the distance from the point to the origin, theta represents the angle between the positive x-axis and the projection of this line segment onto the xy plane, and phi represents this angle here that's between the positive z-axis and the line from the origin to the point. Recall also that we can convert x, y, and z from Cartesian coordinates into spherical coordinates using the equations x equals rho sine phi cosine theta, y equals rho sine phi sine theta, and z equals rho cosine phi. We'll be using these equations on the next page. Suppose we want to integrate over a region E in space that's given by these three inequalities. Rho is between two constant bounds, theta is between two constant bounds, and phi is between two constant bounds. This region of space looks something like this sort of curvy box. Because this curvy box region of space can be described more simply in terms of spherical coordinates than in Cartesian coordinates, it's going to be handy to integrate it using spherical coordinates. Now to do that, we're going to need to convert our variables x, y, and z into spherical coordinates. We're going to need to write our bounds of integration in terms of the bounds given in spherical coordinates. And we're going to need to write our volume element dv in terms of d rho, d theta, d phi. But it turns out that dv the volume of a tiny little spherical box like this is not equal to just d rho times d theta times d phi, the, the change in, in radius times the change in the angles. Instead, we're going to need a conversion factor, and that conversion factor is turns out is equal to rho squared sine phi. I'll explain later informally where that conversion factor comes from, for, but for now let's just take it for granted and write out our integral. So we can write out our triple integral as an iterated integral. We convert our x, y, and z into rho, theta, and phi using the equations on the previous page. So x becomes rho sine phi cosine theta, y becomes rho sine phi sine theta, and z becomes rho cosine phi. We write out, instead of dv, we have our rho squared sine phi, d rho, d theta, d phi, and finally we write in our bounds of integration, since I've written it in this order with integrating with respect to rho first, my innermost bounds need to be my bounds for rho, so that's between a and b, a and b. My next integral is going to be in terms of theta, so my bounds on theta are alpha and beta, and finally, my last integral is respect to phi, and those bounds are gamma and delta. By the way, this same process works even if our bounds of integration are not all constants. For example, if our bounds of integration on rho, for example, had not been constants a and b, but had been functions a and b, functions of, say, theta and phi, then I could still write out the same thing. It's just my bounds here would also be functions of the other variables. Now I know I haven't explained where this rho squared sine phi comes from yet. Bear with me, I'm going to do an example first and then I'll give an informal justification. Now let's use spherical coordinates to find the volume of the solid that lies within the sphere of radius 2 around the origin and below the cone given by z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's going to be the stuff around the outside of the cone, but the inside of the sphere. First, let's describe this region, I'll call it E, in terms of spherical coordinates. We know that rho, the radius, is going to be between 2 and 0. Because we're lying below the cone and above the xy plane, phi is going to be bounded by whatever angle that is for the cone and that bigger angle of pi over 2. 
We know from the previous video on spherical coordinates that tangent of phi is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared over z. So for points on the cone, where z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, tangent phi is equal to 1. Therefore, phi must be equal to pi over 4, and that's going to be our lower bound for phi. Finally, theta can be anything, but to avoid redundancy, I'll just put it between 0 and 2 pi. Now to find the volume, I'm just going to integrate dv, so I'll write that out as a triple integral. I'll convert my dv to rho squared sine phi d rho d theta d phi, and I'll plug in my bounds of integration for rho theta and phi. Since this integrand is a product of separate functions in each variable and the bounds are all constants, it's possible to rewrite this as three integrals. An integral with respect to phi, an integral with respect to theta, and an integral with respect to rho. So the phi integral gets the sine phi in it. The theta integral just gets, I guess, 1. Um, that's between 0 and 2 pi. And the rho integral gets the rho squared in it. Integrating each of these separately, the integral of sine phi is negative cosine phi. The, in the integral of 1 is just going to be theta. And the integral of rho squared is rho cubed over 3. Evaluating these gives us square root of 2 over 2 times 2 pi times 8 thirds, which simplifies to 8 square root of 2 pi over 3. So now I'm going back to the previous slide, and I want to justify where the factor of rho squared sine phi comes from when we're integrating in spherical coordinates. Remember, we said that dv was not just given by d rho d theta d phi, it was given by rho squared sine phi d rho d theta d phi. So to understand where the rho squared sine phi comes from, let's take a closer look at this diagram. We want to estimate the volume, I'll call it delta v, of a tiny little spherical box. Now, the top face and bottom face of this box are given by different values of rho that differ by the amount delta rho. So the length of this blue line segment is delta rho. The side on the left and the right of this box are given by two different values of phi that differ by an angle delta phi. So that's the angle delta phi. And the front face and the back face are given by two different values of theta that differ by the angle delta theta. So delta theta is that green angle from here to here. Now the size of this spherical box is approximately equal to the length of this side times the length of that red arc times the length of the green arc. The length of the blue line segment is just delta rho. Now to find the length of the red arc, notice that this red arc is a portion of this giant red circle of radius rho. The circumference of the red circle is equal to 2 pi times its radius, so 2 pi rho. But the red arc is just a fraction of that entire circumference, and the fraction is given by the ratio of this angle, delta phi, to the entire angle of 2 pi. Therefore, the length of the red arc should be the entire circumference times that fraction, delta phi over 2 pi. That cancels out to rho times delta phi. In fact, you might remember that formula from trig, that the length of an arc is always equal to the angle it subtends in radians times the radius of the circle. We can use the same principle to figure out the length of the green arc. It should be equal to the angle it subtends, which is delta theta, times the radius of this green circle. I'll call that radius r. So we have that the length of the green arc is equal to r delta theta, and I just need to figure out what r is in, ter 
in terms of my spherical coordinates. But looking at this right triangle, it has a right angle here, an angle of phi here, a hypotenuse of rho, and a side opposite to this angle of r. So based on trig, I can say sine of the angle phi is equal to opposite of our hypotenuse, so that's r over rho. And in other words, that means r is rho sine phi, which means that the length of the green arc is going to be rho sine phi delta theta. I'll copy that down up here, rho sine phi delta theta. That was my expression for delta v. Now if I simplify things a little bit, I have two copies of rho, a copy of sine phi, that gives me rho squared sine phi delta rho delta phi delta theta. And if I now change all my deltas to d's in the usual calculus sort of way, I get dv is going to be equal to rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta, which is exactly what I want, just in a slightly different order. So I've now given an informal justification of where that rho squared sine phi comes from. It comes from estimating the size of a tiny spherical box. In this video, we integrated in spherical coordinates using the fact that dv is equal to rho squared sine phi times d rho d theta d phi. Be careful. It's easy to forget the rho squared sine phi, but you always have to stick it in.